Good afternoon everyone and welcome to our service this afternoon. We've had our 10 o'clock service this morning and um, a lovely full church, We've got some new families coming and we all wore masks for the first time we had to wear masks but everyone got on with it. Um, it made drinking coffee interesting but we followed the government regulations and we all wore our masks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Lord, direct our thoughts. Teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ. Amen. We are here today, Lord, to worship you. As we bow our heads before you, we want to be amazed by your wisdom, bowled over by your love, and completely lost in you. Lord, open our hearts to receive you in ways beyond whatever we could ever ask or even think. Amen. We now have our Gospel reading for this morning. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus put before the crowd another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of he heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like hidden treasure in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. And finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May the words of my lips and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our rock and our Redeemer. So, what makes you get up in the morning? The thought of a cup of tea? Something to look forward to? A phone call or meeting with someone you love? The children or grandchildren need feeding and a cuddle. Or perhaps you are caring for someone whose health is waning and you get up to start their day. Many of us here this afternoon will get up five days a week to work or go to school, plug in the computer or jump in the car. Some of us love our work. I love my work, I love my job, it's not really a job, it's, it's a whole way of life and I feel deeply privileged to, to be the vicar of St Matthew's. Some of our work gives us a sense of purpose. We feel that we are contributing something to society. Some of us don't like our work much but perhaps enjoy the, co the company of our colleagues and need the money to survive. We all have our stories 
and each story is unique and special to God. But do any of you get up in the morning and think, today is a gift from God? like it says in the service for morning prayer? Or do any of you get up and think, ha ha, today my task is to bring the kingdom of heaven a little bit closer to Blackmoor, White Hill and Borden. I have a brilliant motivational t-shirt that reads, be the kind of woman who, when you put your feet on the floor each morning, the devil says, oh no, she's up. There's a man's version as well. And I wear it on days when life seems like a bit of a struggle or when the challenges I face seem overwhelming. We all have days like that. Prayer and a t-shirt help. Well, in the reading we heard from Matthew this afternoon, read so beautifully by Finn, there are five parables, stories, about the kingdom of heaven, which, unlike some others in the chapter of Matthew's gospel, are not explained further. We are to make of them what we can. Remember that these stories were originally told to be heard, not to be read. Jesus uses images that people were meant to remember and go on thinking about. Mustard seed, yeast, treasure, a merchant seeking pearls and a net. All of these things illustrate the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom or reign of heaven is absolutely central to Jesus' teaching. Yet it is in many ways puzzling as well as a secret kingdom. Certainly it is quite unlike the modern constitutional monarchy in which we live. Mustard seed is tiny but it grows into a big shrub, even a tree. Yeast works away unseen until the bread rises. The surprise in these stories is not what the seed and the yeast do. They are both familiar. The surprise is in the parallel which Jesus draws with the kingdom of heaven. These stories challenge us not to discount small and apparently inconspicuous things, for God's kingdom also has such small beginnings. Those seeking pearls and treasure do not seem to want them for what they can buy. Indeed, it seems that they already have enough of the world's resources, for they sell things in order to possess the pearls, the treasure. It is the intrinsic value of having them which attracts. These stories challenge us to seek the kingdom of heaven for its own sake and not for what it will bring for us or even for others. Recent events in the news, such as the death of Congressman John Lewis this month, who worked with Martin Luther King, can remind us that some people live amazing lives despite the challenges. In 2017, I heard a sermon in which the Archbishop of Cape Town Febo Makoba referred to the dream that Martin King Luther had for his country and went on to describe his own dream of a world in which all the narcissistic, 
nationalist, isolationist ramblings of our current times will disappear. This is what he said. I have a dream that instead there will arise a global awareness that we are all of one humanity. I have a dream that we will all sit together to decide what is in the best interests, not of this or that group, but of all society. I have a dream that your children and mine will one day live in a world that has an abundance of unlimited and equal access to education, to health care, to water and sanitation and to economic opportunities. Febo Makoba went on to invite that huge congregation of 120,000 to help him realise that dream. He dreamed big. Such big dreams are only realised by one small step at a time. At these huge rallies, someone is in the background making the tea, putting out the bins, sorting out the car park, encouraging someone they know to attend. In the same way, there is not one person listening this afternoon who can't do something to further the kingdom of heaven here and now. It might be through diligent and faithful prayer for someone who is struggling. It might be the right word at the right time to encourage, lift up someone the world has knocked down. End a family feud that has dragged on long after everyone has forgotten what started it. Listen someone who is trying to work out what to do next with their lives. Listen to someone's problems and worries without judgment or trying to fix it for them. Just listen and care. All these seemingly small acts are bringing about the kingdom of heaven. And in our reading that we had from Romans also this morning is the promise that we are not alone in this. All those who respond to God's call are to be conformed to Christ, justified and glorified. We are not alone in this. When we fail, when we face hardship and death, the Holy Spirit will see us through. No forces or beings in the entire universe, even death itself, can separate believers from God. So try it tomorrow. Get up and say aloud. So today, what can I do to bring the kingdom of heaven that little bit closer. Amen. Let us pray. Jesus taught us to pray, your kingdom come, your will be done. Let us pray that in our lives, God's kingdom may come, surprising like the mustard seed, and in secret, like the yeast. Let us pray that God's kingdom may seem to us as valuable as treasure or an expensive pearl. Let us pray that we may be challenged, even in these strange times, these mask-wearing times, to be committed to our part in bringing in God's kingdom now and always. Amen. Now Finn is going to lead us
in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So, this week's notices. I won't be here next week. Um, there will be no live stream service next week. I apologise for that. My daughter Sorrelwood is getting married on Saturday the 1st of August. and She's having her wedding blessing in our church in St Matthew's. Originally, she was meant to be getting married in Oxford, but because of all the um, regulations about holding a, um, a reception afterwards, we've moved it to, to Hampshire. So the legal part of the wedding is taking place in Oxford on Friday the 31st of July, and then she is going to have her wedding blessing and wear her beautiful dress on Saturday the 1st of August at 12.30 at St Matthew's. And I know a lot of you are going to come and stand outside and welcome her. I've got a beautiful um, horse and carriage from um, a, a local family providing the horse and the carriage. And it's gonna be a very special day. And then on the following Sunday, Sunday the 2nd of August, Reverend um, Wendy Malice and the Reverend Nigel Walker will be leading worship at St Matthew's Church. So that is my news. Hear the teaching of Jesus. Blessed are those who hear God's word and obey it. Go now and do God's will. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. <laughs>